Hi, good morning, everybody. Like, like I said before, my name is Marissa Gale. I'm a radiation therapist. I've been working as a radiation therapist for over the last 14 years. And hopefully I can give everyone some insights on helping your matching of your patients be a little bit easier and some tools and techniques to help. So the agenda of this presentation is to demonstrate demonstration of image matching and in the end, we'll do some examples of what to do when we need to troubleshoot. So the first one we have here is a, we have a lateral view and an AP view of the lumbar spine. And like a point of reference that I like to start with is whenever you take some images, make sure you have, that you made the view big enough that you can see a lot of different landmarks. So on the APV, we're able to see the iliac crest. We're able to see the floating rib, which is at T12. On the lateral view, we're able to see each vertebral body pretty clear. So this tells me that this is probably like a KV image. I'm going to play the video, and then we're going to talk about a couple of things on how to help us in the matching up for our patients. So you can notice on the video, there's a moving window. So as I talk, I may pause in between. Everybody views their images differently. Some people like to use this little moving window. Some people like to use the side by side. Some people like to have it so that it wobbles. Whatever is your comfort and helps you see the images best, that's what you use. I like to use the moving window, but like I said, whatever is easier for you to visualize, that is what you will use. So we can see on the, the lateral view, the moving window is trying to see the difference between the DRR, which is the, this is the, this is the image that you took today. And then this little moving box is your DRR. So you're trying to make sure that those two images match. I'm just gonna go back a little bit so we can see that again. So then on the AP view, you see how the driver or the therapist move the image laterally. And now they're trying to see where they are on the floating rib. They are trying to see, so now they're wobbling the image back and forth. They see very little motion or movement. And I'm just gonna play this again because it goes pretty fast. So if you're not used to seeing what I'm showing, it could be a little bit. So again, they move the sliding window and they're trying to see the difference in the depth. They notice that the image was off suit to imp. So they move that and then they notice it's off antipost. They're going back to the AP and they're seeing that the image is off left to right. So they move the image a little bit to the left, the isocenter to the left. And then they're seeing that, the, making sure that they're on the right vertebral body. Now they're going to wobble the image again, just to see how much motion they see. And then they're, they're gonna apply those shifts. I always say when you're dealing with any type of anything that's in the spine or the thorax region to make sure that you have a landmark so that you know you're on the right level. So you may want to make sure you have like an iliac crest, the floating rib, the insertion of the clavicle, the apex of the lung, just something so you have an idea that you're at the right level. So I'm just going to play it through and then we'll go to the next image. So here, this is the next one. Example of prostate with fiducials. So each facility has different requirements per whatever the patient is, how the patient is diagnosed, the severity of their diagnosis, and what the, what the doctor would like to do. So I'm going to talk about what is done at my facility with one of our doctors, but everybody's facility may do things slightly different. So first of all, this is an example of prostate with fiducials. So in a lot of facilities, the first 25 fractions, they may just line up to the true pelvis, meaning that they're gonna make sure that the pelvis brim is on, that like they will use the iliac crest, they'll use the obturators, they'll use different, the pubic symphysis, they'll use these, these different bony landmarks to make sure that the actual bones are on. Maybe for the boost, the, um, many of these patients have fiducials that have been implanted into the prostate. We know that the prostate can move. So what they will do is make sure that we're able to line it up. So as looking at this video, there are these little green markers that are embedded in the prostate. So for this video that I am going to show, 
that this one is gonna be lining up to the prostate. So the bony anatomy may be a little off. I do wanna take this time to acknowledge that a lot of these videos came from different um, sources. So this video was provided by KBTH Medical Center. And each video that I get that's provided from someone, I will give them a little um, recognition. So I'm gonna start playing the video and I will pause it as we go through. So right now we can see they're using the sliding window. The box is a lot bigger than the box that I'd use, that was used on the previous um, demonstration. So the therapist is sliding back and forth to see. And as you slide, you may notice that the pubic symphysis is off, the obturators are off, left to right. The bone anatomy is definitely not matching up. But if we look a little bit clearly, we can see those green fiducials may be aligning with what's embedded in the prostate. There'll be little like, they'll look like pieces of glitter on the cave, on the image. And so now that therapist is also looking at the lateral view, well, an oblique view. So he's trying to make sure that these green markers right here are lining up. This person is working on a trilogy. So I'm gonna play it once again. So as they slide back and forth, you can see here, this is where one obturator is. This is where the other one is. So they're definitely not doing a bony anatomy match. They're using the fiducials, the little green outlines to match with those green, the fiducials that were implanted into the prostate. And this would have been per the doctor's request. Because we know that the prostate moves, we wanna ensure that we're treating just the prostate and maybe some seminal vesicles in the boost plant. So that was per the doctor's request. So I'm just playing it again so that everybody can kind of see it. It goes by a little bit fast. And if you're not used to seeing certain things, it may be difficult for you to see. That's why I'm playing it one more time to get everybody the opportunity to kind of visualize it. And then once they're content with the setup, they're going to apply and those shifts will then be applied. So the patient will be in the correct positioning. The next film example is of a pelvis, and this would be a female pelvis. And this um, image came from Victoria Lopez. So with female pelvis, especially when we have to include the periaortic, it's very important that you not only have the, the pelvis, the bony anatomy match for the pelvis, but also to make sure you have the bony anatomy match for the spine, because there are a lot of like nodal involvement that if we're not aligned on the spine, that we will be missing with our radiation treatment. So I'm going to play this one also. This one's a little bit longer, so I'm gonna let it play. So as you're looking at it, they also have the checkerboard sliding window. Like I said, everybody does something different. Whatever is easiest that allows you to visualize is what will be easiest for you. And we'll notice on this film, there's like a baby blue outline. That will be the actual MLC field that has been drawn out. So right now they're looking at both the AP and the lateral. So as we look at the AP pelvis, they're trying to move it left to right to make sure that everything is included that was drawn out. And on the bottom picture that they have right here, we can see that they took a, an MV film and we can see the actual field. This is that dark gray. So that's the area that we are treating. They're in the process of fi fixing the, the, con the contrast so that you're able to visualize um, the bony anatomy a little bit better. Every machine has different contrasts. You can window level it yourself. You can use a, a protocol that's already preset, whatever works best for you and or whatever is, are the limitations of your treatment machine. So now they're checking. So I'm gonna pause it real right here. So you can see here on the image that we took, this is the edge of the pelvic rim. But we see on the DRR, this is the edge of the pelvic rim. So right here, we know there needs to be a, the isocenter needs to move to the right. So let's play and see what else happens. So I just want to make note of that again, that this is the pelvic rim on the portal image, on the MV image that we took. And this is the pelvic rim on their DRR. So let's just see what they're going to do. So they now have... a they are manually shifting it. So as we see that they move, we see how both of our images kind of now mirror each other. They're, so now our DRR is matching 
our image is matching the DOR when it comes to the left to right shift. So they're checking it some more. And the next thing they're going to probably check will then be this to make sure that the patient is on soup to M. So they're still checking, they're still checking, they're making sure everything is lining up. I'm going to move this along. So they're still checking. Now they're checking for the, they want to check the spine to make sure that's still on. They're reviewing everything. They're still on the AP. They're just verifying that everything is lining up. And then now they're going to start going to the lateral view. They've window leveled it again, and they're still checking. They're fixing the contrast again. Now they're on the lateral view. So the same thing. They took the image. You can see this outline gray image. They're going to fix the contrast. And then they're going to compare their image that they took that day to the DRR that they have. So like they did before, they're going to fix it so that they're able to see certain anatomical landmarks. And we can notice on the side right here, they're just fixing the window level so they can see the bony anatomy. And then depending on different patients' um, body structure, you may have to window level more or less. So they're still looking. So they're checking to see the, the sacrum is still lining up and is within that MLC that they have to treat. And if it's not, they will then make an adjustment. So they're checking, they're looking at the sacrum. And then the next thing they're gonna check will then be the depth with the vertebral body. They are still checking. They've made the necessary adjustments. So they like it. So they're going to apply that shift. And then the patient, then, then they will, if this is on a trilogy, then they will retake the film. Now, this next one is from an Alecta, and this source came from Peru. I hope I'm not, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correct. It came from Yeni Candanas in Peru. So this was taken on an Alecta. I've never worked on an Alecta before, so I'm just going to kind of go over the instructions that they gave me on this one. I'm just going to describe a little bit to you first, and then we'll play the video. So this is how you would do a matching on an Electa. So on the first, this is the first day film. This is an MD image. And on the first day, you have to delineate the radicule and the structures of interest on the DRR. Once this is done on the first day, then it's sticky and it will be there for the next, will be there for the um, remaining treatments. Um, the overlay lines on the MD image. And then you're gonna, like I said, you're gonna make sure that the the graticule is on and the field borders are on first. So then therefore you'll be able to do your bony anatomy match. Now on the Electa, it's you have to do the bony anatomy at, do the bony anatomy match, see what the shifts are, go into the room, do the shifts, and then re-image the patient. So I'm going to play and we're going to watch as this happens. So like I said, this is a cervix and they're going to 5,000 centigrade. So this is the image of where we're treating. Like I said, this is a female uterine cancer. They're showing us what the field is. The MLCs are outlined in that white. And then they're showing you where the, the grid or the radicule. They have to then make sure that the field shape, the MLC shape is copied. And then they outline bony anatomy structures. So that's the image that they took. And here they're using the the method where they're going between the DRR and the image that they took to see if their image is in the correct positioning. So they're figuring out what the shift is going to be and making sure all the information has been carried over so that they can save it. They're checking again to see if there's they see any movement once they have a plot, once they have figured out what their shift is going to be. So you can see they're going between their DRR and the image that they took that day. Image they took that day. And I guess once they approve it, they will then get the shifts. So with this elect machine, not only are they um, checking the patient positioning, but they're also confirming and documenting the correct field shapes. And when you would have an MLC field, you would have to do this for each and every field that on the first day of treatment that you would want to document that all the field shapes are correct. And so if it was, let's say, a four field box, you would have to image APPA, right lat and left lat 
to ensure that what wants to be treated is being treated and documented. So now they've gone to onto the lateral and they're gonna do the exact same thing again. They're gonna make sure that they have the MLC shape. They're gonna make sure they have the radicule. They're gonna make sure that the patient is in the correct positioning. So like was said before, this is something that has to be done on the first day of treatment when using an Electa. I've never worked on an Electa, so I found this to be kind of interesting. So we, we see that they took the image and you can see the area that we're treating, that'll be that dark gray area. And that light gray area is the rest of the body. So they're just making sure that everything is in the right positioning. They're gonna slide back and forth again. And so, like I said, they're documenting that the MLC shape is correct. They're documenting that the patient is also in the correct positioning. So it looks like they have to do a, they have to move the isocenter posteriorly to make sure that the pubic symphysis is matching. And once they like it, they will save those changes. They will apply it. And then they have to um, go into the treatment room, shift the patient, and then re-image so they know that they're in the correct position. So KV isopair pelvis. So if you can see the difference between a KV image and an MV image. The image that we looked at before was an MV image on Electa. This is a KV image probably on a Varian product. This looks like it's probably a trilogy. You can see how much sharper the images are. I'm gonna play the video one time and then I'm going to describe what's going on. So we could just, this video is kind of short. This is under a minute. So we're gonna look at it and then we're gonna play it again and explain what's going on. Okay, so here we go. So this was a female pelvis patient. And so I wanted to play it first so everyone could visualize it. And then I was gonna go back and describe what was going on. So this is a female GYN patient. And as we noticed, there was some kind of rotation. So they started with the lateral view and then we went to the AP view. So on the lateral view, we will see here, right in this pelvis, we see some type of rotation. They just made the screen bigger so they can visualize the rotation. And we can see that, you know, the sacrum is off, the pubic symphysis is off. So they use the measuring tool to see what the difference is. So they have some type of pelvic tilt because even on the AP view, as they're gonna, do again, you'll see that the pelvis is moving. They went back to the lateral view and we still see this pelvic tilt in the back. So we may notice here, there's some gold fiducials that is in this female pelvis patient, which is gonna be different than male pelvis patient with fiducials. In female patients, we do not move to the fiducials because we know that the cervix may move. We're gonna always stick with the bony anatomy to ensure that we are treating the areas that need to be treated and to get the necessary lymph node. I mean, the fiducials may not be in the exact location, but they need to be very close. And like I said before, the fields include nodes that needs to be covered. This imaging came from Joshua. So I'm gonna play it one more time for us to see where that rotation was. And then later on, we'll discuss how we can fix these rotations that we then find. So we can see on the AP that the, the hip on the right side is higher and is wobbling down. She's gonna show it again. That's the DRR. So we would need to bring our patient's hip down on one side. So if I'm going along, if you have any questions, feel free to put questions in the chat if you want me to review anything else. I know it's a lot of information and sometimes this is some new topics that maybe many of you have not seen before. Also of note, what's very important is the CT sim. I know I gave a talk a few weeks about it. To ensure that your matching each and every day is um, flawless, is that you need to have a good sim. You need to have a good starting point. So make sure that most of these patients have great immobilization devices. So if we're doing any kind of GYM patient, that they would have like a vac lock. If you're doing a GYM, they would have a vac lock, then maybe their arms are above their head especially if they treat the periaorta region. Same thing with prostate patients, make sure that they're, they don't have a lot of bulky clothes underneath them, that they just have a gown, a sheet, and they're on an immobilization device. That would, that greatly increases the ability to reproduce and having as little shifts or like making the, making the setup reproducible on a daily basis.
Now, the next one is actually me. This is my patient at work. So this was a little boy and we were treating his knee. He had urine sarcoma. So for extremities, especially knees and femurs, I find those to be the most difficult of all the setups because you really need to make sure you have a great immobilization device. That is the key to all of this, especially if the patient has, like we can see in this image, the knee is going to be bent. I'm going to play it through and then I'm going to go back and talk about what I did. And this one, I took an MV and KV image and I'm working on a variant true beam. And then I'll explain everything that was done. Okay, so like I said, this is a pediatric case. He had a urine sarcoma and we were treating his left knee. So we had to make an immobilization device, which was a vac lock. And for this treatment, his knee that we were treating, which was his left knee was elevated whereas his right leg was laying flat on the treatment table. So also for extremities, you wanna make sure that you have a reference point. So this one was pretty good because it was exactly at the proximal portion of his femur. So we can see when I started, we can see this, this is the AP view. I took an MVKV, so one image is very sharp, the KV and the MV, just because of his positioning on the table and to ensure there was no collision with the gantry and the patient. I like the small box because I can see exactly like, so here you see I'm moving the patient ant to post, no, left to right, and then I'm just checking that we're at the right level, soup to M. So I'm just making sure because that was the treatment area. I then went to the lateral view and I changed the window leveling and I noticed that he's off and to post and I just match up the bony anatomy to make sure that we're on. And I continue to check because I want to make sure. Then once I was okay with the shifts, I liked it. I then window leveled it. So on a true beam, you can hit the apply the shifts. The machine will then go to the shifts that you needed to do. And there's no need to re-image. It automatically moves the patient to that positioning and the films then reflect what you have done. And like I said, that came from my institution. The next one is, hold on, I'm just letting it play through again. So the next thing is repositioning, troubleshooting. So set every time you set the patient up is gonna come out perfectly. Things are gonna happen and you're gonna be like, well, what do I need to do? So we have some slides of how some images are not set up correctly. And then if we want to, if somebody wants to say something or have any suggestions of how we can then fix it or what we should do, what we should do in order to fix so that the positioning is accurate and perfect. So this first one is a pelvis, a lateral pelvis. Like a lot of female pelvis patients, I'm gonna play it first. Let me see how long this one is. And so we can see again, that blue line is the MLC fields. And as we move back and forth, we can see that the spine is rotating back and forth, right? We see the sacrum rotating. We see the lower lumbar spine moving back and forth. So I'm gonna just pause it right here for a second. And then I'm gonna pose a question to the group. You can unmute yourself as, as possible. What do you think we should do in order to fix this? Anybody? Nobody wants to share what they think they should do to fix it? If you don't want to unmute, you can also write in the chat. Did anybody write anything in the chat? I'll give it another couple more seconds. Oh, someone asked if you could please run it again. Oh, okay, no problem. Sorry, let me definitely play that again. So again, the spine is off. So the patient is not setting up. We can see that as they hovered over the, you know, L spine. Now they're looking at the pubic symphysis. What do you think we should do to fix this? And this is a GYM patient. Hello, Parisa. Yes. Hi. This hi, is this is Akka Khan from Pakistan. Okay, so what do you think you would do to fix this? I think that there are uh, two things that can help us to set this patient. One of the thing that if we have uh, like a six of couch and then maybe in supine direction, we can tilt our couch slightly that we can and shift our couch posteriorly then or anteriorly, then we can match the anatomy. The other thing is that 
that placement of a of a like a knee 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 fix kind of thing or like back lock it can also help us to set this patient as we did in the ct scan All right perfect so you gave a lot of information so yes, if you if your facility does have a six um, degree couch, yes, what you said will work perfectly. But some places don't have a six degree couch. They will only have a couch that works in, you know, soup and amp pose left, right. So in those cases, you may want to have to reset up your patient. This is actually a male patient. So you may want to have to tell them like, you need to relax. You need to make sure there's nothing else underneath them. You will need to make sure that the um, immobilization device is in the correct position, that the feet are all the way secure. You would want to also make sure that once you've fixed all of that, you would want to re-image. Um, generally for me, when I do pelvis patients to prevent a tilt, I try not to put a knee bolster in. I try to keep their legs as flat as possible if they can tolerate it. Some people cannot. Generally, that's like my go-to fix for anything. Just starting in the sim, I like to keep their legs flat as possible. But yes, your answer is correct. Thank you for volunteering. Well, I'm going to do another one. So this one is showing an example of a female pelvis. And I had alluded to it before. You can see the areas that they want to treat. This is the MLC field. And the different color wash designates different critical body structures. So this is an example of why when we're doing female GYN patient, it's so important to make sure that the alignment is on. Because even though your true pelvis can be on, if your spine is off, you'll be missing out on critical lymph nodes that need to be treated. So this is just as um, an image, but I didn't want to make light note of it because it's very, it's very common. You start treating a female GYM patient where the pelvis is on perfectly. And then as you scroll up, you notice that the spine starts to veer off either to the right or to the left. I've noticed some ways to alleviate that problem is in the CT sim. I like to on patients put the ISO tattoo at L3 and then I'll put a superior tattoo, like somewhere between T6, T7, depending on you know how tall or how short the patient is. And then I'll put an inferior alignment tattoo on like the pelvis. So therefore you have like a line to set them up so you know that they're nice and straight. And then you'll also know that was that is level. I found that adding those soup and in tattoos on the AP is like a game changer. Also with a lot of the GYM patients, I know it's not the most comfortable position, but I like to have their hands raised, maybe give them a head mold and have them holding like um, a wing board so that their hands are above their head. So we have another example, pelvis two. So I'm gonna ask for another volunteer. I'm gonna play it and then we're gonna see what's wrong with it and how we can fix it. Okay, so there's a couple of things that's going on in this video clip. So I want to see, well, one thing I wanted to point out, as the clip was playing, there was the blue contour lines. I'm gonna play it again. So as we see, the therapist is checking that the sacrum and the L-spine is on. He's checking the pubic symphysis. There should be a little shift soup to him. Then, so see, now he's checking on the AP film. He's checking that pelvic rim, seeing the level of the femoral head. He's checking the spine. He's checking the iliac crest. You're going to notice that they now put on the actual contour. So that's telling us where we need to treat. So is everything that we need to treat within that blue contour that is there? And then we're going to go on to the next one. So this is after they move the patient. So we can see that everything was in. That was the one we just see. The next one is going to be this one. It's the same thing again. I'm just going to play it again. So you can see how from the first one, they were able to shift. Everything is lining up, they're checking. I'm just playing it one more time so you can see it again. As you see all that blue, that's what needs to be treated. So we noticed something, that whole top region is, is missing, right? This is a female GYM patient. So we need to make sure that that spine area is being covered. So now this is the top region. This will be the superior portion of that field. So I'm gonna play 
it and we're going to notice. So you see where that MLC is. So our spine should be in the middle of that, right? Uh, uh oh. So I'm going to pause it right there. Let's do it again. Now we see that this spine field is very close to what's contoured out. So now, how are we going to fix that? How do you think we should fix that? Does anybody have anything they would like to uh, tell me how they would fix that? You could put it in the comments. You can unmute yourself and tell me how you think you would fix that. Hello, Marissa. Hi. Hello. Yes, my name is Vincent. Okay. My name is Vincent. Hi, Vincent. So I think the only way we can get Yes, two things that happen here. Uh, maybe during the setup, the patient was not well aligned. That's why okay. we are seeing some rotation of the spine. Okay. Or maybe uh, after setting up the patient, maybe the patient wasn't that very comfortable. So when you are moving out, the patient tried to adjust herself so that she can be able to lie comfortably. So it's to go back inside the machine and maybe try to see the alignment, if uh, the mark was put there, or try to, to align the patient by trying to move the spine towards the left so that it can be straight in line with the pelvis. Perfect, exactly, Vincent. Thank you so much for um, sharing and participating. Exactly what he said. It could have been a, a number of things. It could have been the patient was uncomfortable, they slightly moved. It could have just been like anything. But now that we know that it's not correct, how I always suggest to fix it would be to, yes, you must go back into the room. You must move maybe her upper portion of her body to be in alignment with the bottom portion of the pelvis. And then you would have to re-image. I'm going to continue playing the rest of the clip. Because if you just try to shift it, shift the spine on, you then may be shifting the true pelvis off. So you're going to have to go back in and realign the patients and then re-image to ensure that both the periodics and the spine is on and that the true pelvis is on because there's a lot of lymph nodes and we don't want to miss anything. So I'm going to play it again so that everybody can see. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next one. I'm going to play it. So they're showing that blue line is the, uh, so this is how they fixed it. So with the sliding window, we can see that everything is in alignment, that they're checking that the floating rib and that we're at the correct, your alignment is correct. Also, one thing I wanted to note um, is that sometimes this is, this is like a different example. If you were treating, let's say a patient that had to have like emergency spine treatment, I always say to make sure that you're on the correct vertebral body, you saw that they use the window, the little box here to make sure that, you know, this vertebral body was matching with this, with the floating, with the floating rib, right? They had a, like an anatomic landmark to know that they were on the correct vertebral body. I'll play it one more time for us to look at. So this is a slide yet again of where the shifts were made and now it's correct so that we can see Everything that needs to be treated is in the correct position. So this is an AP. This came from Dr. Kitt. He uses a 0.5 CM margins and the standard is 0.7. This is an image of a GOM pelvic field to indicate the nodes. Both pelvis and the spine positioning must be correct, especially if the field goes higher up on the spine. And we've showed that before in the previous image video clips that we had that if that spine isn't on, you're, you're missing critical tissue that needs to be treated. So we have another pelvic example. We're gonna play it and we're gonna see how are we going to correct this one? It's about 40 seconds. Someone asked a question in the Q&A. Okay. They wanna know if you could please briefly explain the difference between MVK mean MVKV matching as opposed to independent jaw field matching? I don't, I'm not familiar with the term independent jaw field matching. Are they just talking about an MLC? I've never heard that term. I think before. so. I, I, okay. I think that would be, uh, that's the only thing I can think of. I don't know if they. 
want to elaborate? Um, well, and I can explain that real quick since the question came up. MVKV is just the imaging technique that you're using to get how crisp of an image you want. So sometimes in my facility, I will use that for my reference point is, sometimes we'll take a KV image on something that's an IMRT plan that we just need to see the ISO center. And the KV image will give us a nice clear image. Sometimes we'll take MV images on breast patients where we need to show exactly the gantry angle and the treatment field itself that was treated so that you would have the MLC on that image. I know some places will just take the actual MLC field, but we like to take the MLC field, like with the area that we're treating, and then we'll take a bigger image so that we can compare the surrounding critical structures and body anatomy to ensure that the patient is on. A lot of it is driven by what the doctor preferences are and what are the goals of the patient. So some patients, we will do daily KV imaging because it's something that is curative. It's something that the doctor wants to see exactly every day, the images. Sometimes we're treating something that's palliative and we know we're treating, let's say, the true pelvis. He know, the doctor will know that, you know, the patient's in a lot of pain. We don't need to keep them on the table longer and imaging and imaging. We know that we have a sufficient margin and a film that's once a week is appropriate. Does anyone have any other questions? And did that answer um, that question in the chat? So I played the last image I played was a pelvis one. I'm going to play it again so that we can see it. And again, the question I'm asking is, how would we fix? And what needs to be fixed? Does anybody have Hello, anything to say? Oh. Hello, how are you? Now, based on uh, my diagnostic background, okay. the issue of the, the fixation of the knees. Eh? Yes. Uh, we used to be told if you want to reduce the lumbar lordosis, eh, you try to elevate the knees. So I think on this other patient, we should look at how did they fix the knee rest? Because okay. that is what will be able to affect the lumbar region. So if you try to remove, maybe you did not place the nearest in the exact position, that's why you are seeing the, the spine maybe being a little bit lower or upper, depending on where did you fix it. So I think on this patient, we need to go in and recheck uh, fixation for the knees, then re-image, because I think that is what is affecting the spinal position. Correct, Vincent. Thank you so much. Um, yes, some so sites use, like you said, a knee wedge. You may want to see where it, it was placed, and that will give you that rotation that's in the spine. The other question I was asking is, in which direction would the shift need to go? The isocenter would have to go. There was an antipost shift on the spine to fix it. Also, because every time you place that knee, this is my preference. Like I said before. Because every time you place that knee wedge, you're introducing a new item that introduces more motion. I like to keep things simple when I'm in the sim. So like I said, if the patient can tolerate without that knee bolster, I take it out to ensure that the patients are flat and therefore I eliminate this motion that we have at the sacrum. But you're gonna have to do what works best for your patients. If your patient can't tolerate that, then definitely you must put the bolster in. Hi, Marisa. I have yes. a little question that yes. uh, you are saying that for the pelvis patient, you are keeping the, the legs of the patient straight without any knee bolster or using any backlog. They okay, definitely fine. have a backlog. They have a mobilization okay. device, of course. So, I so use a you... backlog and no knee bolster. Okay, fine. But for the female patient, you are also using the backlogs? I use a backlog and depending on what it needs to be, there will be a knee bolster. So if I have to do a patient that is frog legs, of course, they will have a backlog and a knee bolster so that I can um, get their legs to be frog legs or like, you know, in a ballet move. It also depends on the, the health of the patient. Are they able to even get their legs out that wide? So there's a lot of like variables that are introduced, but when I use the leg bolster, I try to use a hard one, not one of these nice cushiony soft ones because they move too much in my experience. Okay, okay. Uh, can I ask another question? Sure, go ahead. Okay, it's uh, also for the uh, female pelvis. Yes. You know, the treatment of the pelvis only 
treatment of the pelvis uh, setting that this patient is quite not very you know challenging but when it comes parotid region along with the pelvis it becomes very difficult and especially in the lateral position when you are matching the the pelvis area the lumbar region is going out in anterior posterior direction so would you recommend any gadgets or like immobilization devices that can help to uh, to re- reproduce the to improve the reproducibility of uh, this setup what you described is a challenge that a lot of us have so it's not just you or your clinic some patients at the time of sim were either extremely nervous and then they either overarch their back and they just can't relax So what I have noticed is in some cases if it's that challenging on a daily basis we have just resimmed the patient and then just try to explain to them you need to try to relax as much as possible. We do not like putting any kind of like mats or cushions underneath the spine for treating pelvis patients that are that's just not a, a thing that we like to do. What I would suggest is that sometimes we found longer vac locks and we've kind of tried to go further up to see if that will make them feel a little bit more comfortable. or we've made that such that the immobilization we've played like an alpha cradle and we've used like a hard knee wedge and just really try to mold it and then have the patient scoot their the back of their buttocks to the edge so we had like a spot to know where it started if that makes sense so we have their legs immobilized it's in a hard knee wedge and we've had the ladies either scoot down especially if they have to be frog legs and then just told them to try and relax as much as possible make sure whatever was under their head was maybe like a softer mold and try to make sure that their arms were up and just just try to give them time to relax and just really explain the process to them um, a lot of times patients are just so nervous that they tense up and then they're rigid and as the treatments go along they start to relax and then you're you never able to match back up that 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 spine to the same, to the lumbar spine it's like they're never in the same plane that is what has helped us any other questions okay i'm going to go on to the next slide which is another example of a pelvis and this one i'm going to play and then we're going to discuss it real quick this is a short slide someone's asking if you can repeat your answer to the last question because they missed some of it okay i will repeat it after i go over this slide is that okay for them Yes. So for this AP feel, what do we notice? How would we fix this one? How would we fix this one? If nobody has an answer, I'll I'll give the answer. So as we notice there's a slight rotation. So as we start this again, you notice that they shifted the patient to the to the left slightly. They're checking, you know, the top of the pelvic rim, they're checking the iliac crest. they're coming around they're checking again they're coming down again they see the femoral head oh well here we know is that the pubic symphysis is slightly off but the rest of the pelvic rim is on so let's see what are we going to do to fix this so on this one we would just need to rotate the lower pelvis to the right and give like a slight roll because we can see that it's going like sideways we would just If you don't have a 6 degree couch, you I would literally go in the room and just slightly bring the patient down, do a little roll, re-image and that will fix your problem. I'm going to let this play one more time and I'll go back to the to answer the question that I believe Vincent had asked in regards to GYN um patients on the lateral view where the spine with the upper spine and lower spine is not aligning. His question was there was there like a device that we used to fix that. And generally said we don't have a device. A lot of times at the time of sim, the patient was probably extremely nervous, extremely uncomfortable. As treatment goes along, it's becoming very difficult for you to properly align the patient. My goal is always to then maybe the doctor may suggest in doing another sim. And in the sim is to make sure that the patient understands that they would need to be as to relax as much as they can to make sure then for these female GYN patients that you may want to put like a leg bolster have a immobilization device like a back lock or aquaplast and i also suggested that having the patient having their like the lower part of their thigh but maybe the back lock so that you have an idea of where they are suit to him 
and is trying to really encourage the patient to relax. Also to make sure that the hands are above their head, maybe grabbing onto a wing board or any type of device that you have that their hands would be above their heads. I mean, those were some of my suggestions to help that. And then this is another example, again, of the rotation in the pelvis. I'm just going to play it. We've seen this, this example a couple of times. I'm just going to play it for us to see again, but we're really not going to discuss it. We can see that the spine is off, antipose. See, we can see there's like a huge wobble in the sacrum. And then the last example we have is that of an extremity. So this is a femur. This is an extremity. On this one, we can see that red outline. That is the actual MSC field. So I'm going to play it and then we're going to discuss it. And again, for any extremity, I always put them in a back lock, something that is a custom mobilization device, especially if you're doing like a femur. It's important so that your leg is nice and straight and you won't have the left to right wobble in which you would have part of, let's say the upper portion of your field is actually in the treatment field. And then your lower portion is kind of like slowly coming out. So as we saw in the video, they were moving back and forth and you can see that this image is definitely off left to right. So now they're trying to fix the proximal aspect of the femur. So that looks good, right? Also, when you do any kind of extremities, you want to at least get the proximal or distal portion of it. So you know exactly that you're at the right, that you're at the top and I mean, soup to M. But now we notice here that the bottom portion of the femur is really not gonna be in the field. So how would we fix this? Anybody have any suggestions of how to fix this? So some examples we saw, I'm gonna play it again, was that the therapist, or if this was me attempting to set this up, I would definitely match the prox proximal aspect of the femur. I would match that. And then as we notice here, I get to play again. There we go. So we have some wobble in it. The bottom portion is not staying in. What I would suggest is that we may wanna slightly move the lower portion of the leg. And so when we have setups like this, my suggestion is match the part that is fixed and it's most difficult to move, then adjust the patient's positioning accordingly. So you're gonna match the top, the proximal portion, and then I will go in the room if they had like a vac lock, I will slightly then move the lower portion of the patient. Some tips. When checking positioning of extremities, always include anatomy that allows you to confirm the soup in position. So like I said, when filming a femur, you wanna include enough of the proximal or distal aspect so you can make sure that you're in the correct position. So key points for image matching. Image the area that's being treated. So if you're treating a right breast, you should image a right breast. If you're treating a pelvis, you should film the entire pelvis so you have a lot of, so you can make sure that you're in the correct position. If repositioning is needed, match to a fixed location and then determine how to move the patient. So like we saw in the femur, I would match the, the proximal aspect of the femoral head. And then I would manly go in the room and move the lower aspect of the leg. And I would still even do this even if you have a six degree couch, because sometimes it's just a, like a slight nudge and it will fix your problem. If you use AutoMatch, you must always review it yourself. And I'm going to say this again. If you use AutoMatch, you must always review the match yourself. I've seen that AutoMatch either line up to the wrong vertebral body, line up to the wrong rib. The AutoMatch is a tool. It is not the um, be all and end all. It is our job as a therapist to ensure the correct positioning. Always finish with looking at the big view to make sure you've matched correctly. So even though you may be treating a small MLC field, you want to make sure that all these other places are also matching up. It's like your own um, self-check. Portal images, portal image. Remember to check that the field shape is correct and to check the MLC light 
for leaks so that whatever image that's being treated on that DRR is matching and has the same shape that you're treating on the patient. I want to acknowledge these sites and these people for sharing these videos, which made it possible for me to give this lecture. KBTH, Elaine Hubert, Joshua Langer, myself, Victoria Lopez, and Yeni Cadenas. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Or if you have any questions you would like to place in the chat? Someone asked if you could throw more light on the portal image MLC and light leaks, but I think you just went over it. So I'm not sure if that. Well, I don't have an, an image of it, but a light leak would be when, hold on. I'm going to go back through this and see if I can explain it this way. We don't have a picture of a light leak. That's definitely not something you want to see. Hold on, I went too far. So you see here, this is that gray MLC shape, right? So we know that wherever the white is, radiation is being blocked out, correct? So a light leak, you would actually see some light in the middle of the field that shouldn't be there. That's how you would know that that MLC isn't working and hasn't moved to the correct position. So you can see here how these are the MLC shapes, right? So if this isn't moving to the correct position, you're going to have whites coming in, or you're going to see radiation in the spot that's not there. Does that make any, does that make sense?